Hey everyone, it's Cody with Seagrave Serpentarium here with Slick Mister the Ball Python, and today I have a video of my first ever trip to a reptile expo, uh, which I went to this past Saturday in Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, I didn't go alone though, I brought along my friend Marcus, also known as Cookie Jedi here on YouTube as well as on Twitch, who was kind enough to film me and ask a bunch of questions about all the different types of animals we saw which prompted some really interesting discussions that I'm excited to be able to share here. Um, if I'm able to include links in video descriptions, I'll have links to Cookie's channels uh, on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, although last time I tried to do that, YouTube told me I'm not allowed to add links in descriptions yet. So um, if I'm able to, those will be there. Uh, otherwise, um, I, it's Cookie Jedi, so you'll, you should be able to find him uh, just by searching that name. Um, before we get started, I just want to acknowledge that this video is coming out very shortly after my previous video, uh, but that's mainly because of how quick and easy it was to get all this footage in one go, um, and then just kind of cut out uh, everything and just trim it down to the interesting parts. Uh, so I don't want to set any expectation that I'm going to start doing a regular weekly upload schedule. Uh, this one just happened to be ready very shortly after my last upload. Um, although I think at this point it can be safely expected that uh, any uh, time I upload uh, the space between um, any two videos that I put out uh, will be probably more than a week but no more than a month. Uh, so that's uh, a, about the schedule we're looking at here. Finally, I would just like to note that I tried to make a point to mention the names of the companies at the tables we stopped by, and Cookie was uh, doing his best to get footage of the company names and info, um, and I did what I could during editing to have notes pop up giving the names of the companies for the tables that uh, we're at as we go to them. Uh, that said, I was also very excited to be at my first Reptile Expo. Um, I'm new to YouTube and making videos in general. So I want to apologize in advance if I missed any uh, anyone's information and ended up featuring vendors in the video without having their business info included. Hey, what's up gang? It is quarter of six in the morning. I just woke up for the Reptile Expo and uh, making some tea. Uh, I'll have more updates as the day goes on, but right now my wife's asleep and I don't want to be too loud. Alright, it's about an hour since uh, my last check-in, uh, and I am on my way to meet Marcus uh, slash Cookies so we can go to the reptile show. Uh, I'll update you when I get somewhere worth updating about. Yo, uh, it's me and also Cookie, and we are on our way to the Reptile Expo. I'll uh, check back in once we get there. Um, okay, so real quick, I just want to give uh, cut in and give some real quick uh, context for the next part. I was super excited once we got to the Expo and also anxious to make sure I was ready to go in as soon as the doors opened. Uh, so I only really thought to take one picture of me and Cookie waiting in line to go in. And then once we got to the expo, once we got inside, I was in such a hurry to make sure I uh, didn't miss out on any radiant heat panels that were there that I didn't really bother getting any footage until after I had gotten one. So the part of the video where we're at the expo just kind of abruptly, uh, abruptly begins with me being super hyped about a big plastic rectangle that I just bought. Uh, after that, the video flows more naturally, so I probably won't need to cut back in to smooth over uh, many more transitional areas. All right, yo, what's up, gang? I got a 80 watt radiant heat panel here. Uh, the only thing I came to the expo for. We have been here for less than an hour. We're still in the VIP early access time. I have like $2 left on me, uh, so we're mostly just gonna hang out and experience the expo. You know that dart frogs aren't poisonous um, unless they are in the wild eating. Uh, so like it's, their poison doesn't get produced by them. Uh, they get their poison from their diet. So like, I mean, 
I'm not gonna touch them because like they're behind a thing and all that, and they would be bad for the frogs. But like, if I did touch the frogs, the main concern would be to the frogs, not to me, because uh, they are not poisonous here. What is it that they eat the diet specifically that causes the poison to form? I don't know. Do you know what it is that they eat in the wild that makes them poisonous? Insects? Oh, yeah, poisonous insects. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, what's the name of the uh, company here? Black Jungle? All right. Um, yeah, here at Black Jungle, they got a lot of cool uh, dart frogs and uh, carnivorous plants. Really cool selection here. Thank you. What are you thinking as you look around? Um, I'm just looking to see what kinds of critters I can find. Uh, I'm not sure if Gila monsters are legal in Massachusetts, but if they are, I'd love to see one here. Um, ooh, right now I'm thinking Canyon Sandboat. All right. And some berms, but more interested in the Canyon Sandboas. Which one is the Kenyan Sandboa? These two right here. These guys are from Kenya. They live in the sand and uh, they are really cool. They're a type of boa. And I love them. I'm going to get one someday. It's so funny. I see them. Oh, and here we go. So the male It's like a scaleless rat snake. Uh, a couple of them there. Oh, Vietnamese blue beauty. Yo, let's go. These things are so cool. So in order of how you looked at them, starting with these guys, those guys, and these guys, what uh, what makes them cool? What makes you like them? Uh, so this one is cool because it lives in the ground. It's got a goofy looking face. Uh, like, look at the face on that thing. Are you okay if we film? These? All right, thank you. Yeah, so check out the face on this guy. They've got such a goofy face, um, but they've got a like boa disposition and personality. Um, so like they're really calm and chill and uh, really cool to hold. Also, if you notice, the front is really smooth, and then the back is keeled. So those scales are really rough. And then the Vietnamese Blue Beauty is pretty cool uh, just because they look good. <laughs> uh, it's a good looking snake. Fair enough. Oh, look at the big one. Oh my god. Oh, You're a chunky boy. No, I don't. Nah, oh, there's a big boa in there. Oh my goodness. Holy cow. I'm not in it. Like, yeah, right, no. Cool. And yeah. if like your face ends up in it, we can absolutely blur it for you. Well, I mean, I can step out through behind too. If you want to. Yeah, I just want to get a close up of some of these bioactive water features. They look really great. That's uh, that's really nice. And this is with Jungle House. Uh, yeah, get a picture of that sign too, so we get them a little bit of promo on there. Are you okay with us showing your company on there? Yeah, yeah, okay. I don't get a ton of these. I, don't, I just don't like on video. Yeah, of course. As as you can get people to like take photos of it all the time. Too. Yeah, I don't get a ton of views, but yeah. uh, I'd like to have the name of the companies if I film at their tables. These are really nice. I like the mix of plants in this one. Oh, what's this species called? I've had these before. The the one uh, with the Fetonia. veins. Fetonia. Uh, Fetonia. Or nerve plant. Uh, uh, nerve plant. Okay, yeah, the, with those bright pink lines, I love those. Now, the ones that are more splotchy, are those the same? No, those are uh, those things. All right. How long does it take you to put one of these enclosures together? Uh, depending on the size, but around like a week, two weeks, depends on it. I got my corn snakes. My corn snakes in a bioactive 40 gallon, but uh, 
I don't have like any backdrop, no water feature or anything like that. Just uh, just some zebra isopods and some pothos. But I mean, it, it works for him. He seems to be happy. I mean, it, it's definitely the two things that like the pothos is like indestructible. Yeah. Can't go wrong with it. All right, well, thanks for uh, showing us some of your stuff here. Yep. Uh, Thank have you. A good one. Yeah, no is that a king snake there? Yep. Alright. How old are these sand boas? Tiny. Couple months? Wow. These guys are adorable. Oh, and a hog. I'm definitely someday going to get a hog and a sand boa. That's on my list. Thank you. We got emerald tree boas up here. Oh my god, wow. <laughs> yeah. These things have gigantic teeth. Gigantic teeth? Huge teeth. If I remember right, I think it's the largest teeth of any non-venomous snake. Are they like the, the rear fanged, the front fanged, all over no, the mouth? They're not, they're not venomous, but they have <laughs> the teeth everywhere. Oh my god, wow. Yeah. You okay if we film these bows a little bit? Alright. Wow, look at its head. Yeah, they've got just a gorgeous head. Very strong bite though. And uh, yeah, not quite what I'm looking at getting anytime soon. But they are real pretty. Look at you, you're gorgeous. One of those really rare fossorial snakes lives underground yeah. toy. Yeah, I, it's not it's not the it's Senno. Yeah, it stumped me. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like the it's the the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are really rare. You stumped me. Senno pelts. Senno pelts, yeah. These are you said Oh yeah, that's what the lamper pelts is, yeah. But yeah, these are gorgeous snakes. I've heard they're a pain to keep alive though. I gotta mess with my snakes all the time. That's my you, thing. It's oh, basically like having a box of Yeah. Oh. Until you throw food in them. Well, <laughs> the California red sided garters. I someday if I ever make enough, because I want to do reptile education, if I ever make enough off of that, I'm getting myself a colony of these things. That's another cool thing if you want a video. Oh wow, that looks exactly like a leaf. Yo, you got a blood python! Hell yeah! Blood python is also on my short list. Hi guys, how's Hi. it going? Good. How are you guys? Pretty good. good. Is it okay if like we film the booth and stuff? Absolutely. Yes, please yes. feel free. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, this is a rescue. Yes, we are. Awesome. Welcome to Machete Chase. <laughs> Where are you guys located? Oh, nice. official 501c3 oh wow! This year. Congratulations! Well, thank you. It was such a blessing. I actually, I'm Mr. Nichols' mom. But, um, yeah, he's got the metabolic bones and things. Now, how does that present in leopard geckos? I'm mostly into snakes. You can see that he kind of looks like he's doing that mud army crawl. Yeah, okay, so that's how he walks yeah, with his elbows yes. out. Sadly, uh, with his case um, specifically, a lot of his bones didn't form properly and there was some breakage. Right. Um, his chest cavity is also a little bit more expanded than usual, so it kind of looks like he's a little like um, like he's, he's broad chested for a leopard gecko. And, yeah. Like, and he's got a thick neck. Uh, that's also not normal. Um, Same. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you got a uh, a day gecko. Me too. I was uh, I was talking to someone else over there who has um about how they uh, they can tear their skin off when they get scared. Yeah. Is this a, a lychee, a chewy? That's actually a Cuban floss chameleon. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I see it now. Love them. Yeah. Those are cool. They're very cool. All right, well, that's great. It was great meeting you. Did you grab a business card? Yeah, I got a business card. Okay. We're good. I'm gonna grab one too. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Thank you. My cat almost got eaten by an iguana. That's pretty uh, odd. Yeah. Was it, it a baby? The cat or the iguana? The cat. Yeah, yeah. Yo, they got tailless whip scorpions. Holy cow. Do you mind if we film it's here? The veil Is it okay if we film some of the animals? Sure. All right, cool. Thank you. So yeah, these things are nightmares. Where are you pointing? Here. That's a I wouldn't say nightmares. Yeah, that's a panther chameleon. These are the ones that kind of like, like uh, sling their front bits out. Yeah, I don't think these can actually hurt people that much. Yeah, anyway, we should get What's that? the tailless whip scorpions. They're they look scary, but they can they actually hurt people? No, you know what? People get freaked out because they're they're horrifying in, in yeah, how they look. <laughs> the ends of their little feet had these things where they they can stick real good. Yeah, it's like little pricks. They're not biting you, but. It, it's literally pricking you to hold on. Okay. Like they're, uh, like they like to be sideways. Oh, uh, very chameleon's cool. going for the heat lamp there. Not sure how hot the outside Appreciate of that thing that. gets. Not, okay, good. Oh Thank my god. god. Yeah. What is I know the one I have the with my ceramic heat emitter gets uh, crazy I've, hot. Yeah, I've, so. I've touched myself here <laughs> reaching over to cages on those. Oh my god. Yeah, it can be a nightmare, and yeah, I figure for that little guy. Yeah, that chameleon's cute. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, guys. Have a good show. Thank you. I go up there, but my lucky oh, my God, look at these head. cuties. Yeah. Diablo Blanco. I love that. It's a white devil. Yeah, those are. that's a morph. Uh, I don't see a normal here. If I saw a normal, I could, like, really point out the difference. So, what is the morph of this one? Like, obviously, the other one had, like, the spikies on its eyes and stuff like that. Uh, well, well, no, so the one with the spikes on its eyes, that's just what that gecko looks like. Oh. The morphs here are the colors and the patterns. Oh. So, you see, this is a leopard gecko, this is a leopard gecko, this is a leopard gecko, this is a, these are leopard geckos, but they all look different because they're all different morphs of leopard gecko. That's why, like, it doesn't even bother saying leopard gecko here. We've got Avtor, Max Snow, Jungle Bold, Extreme Tangerine, Clown Jungle. Because, like, you're just expected to know these are all leopard geckos, so they just advertise what the morph is for it. So, genetically, I think that, actually, like... This might, is this a normal here that just says leopard gecko? Yeah, that's a normal. Yeah, so that's an example of a normal there. So that's what they would look like in the wild. Um, that's what normal means. It means, like, wild type. Uh, nothing uh, fancy with the genetics. Everything else you see here that's not normal is something that people have selectively bred for. Oh, very cool. Yeah. I mean, you can find, like, a morph in the wild, um, and you just have to get it into captivity before it gets eaten, and then breed it. And this is, oh, man, green tree pythons. I love these guys. These are, uh, they're from a different part of the world of the, than the emerald tree boa. Emerald tree boa is in the Amazon. Green tree pythons, um, I think they're in, I want to say either Africa or Asia, but they're um, in the other hemisphere of the world across the ocean from where we have the uh, emerald tree boas. But they look similar and they've kind of converged on the same body form. And uh, yeah, got basically, they live in trees just like the uh, emerald tree boa. So they ended up having... So right Very here, we've got like three different that are all green tree pythons. Yeah, will, will these they three. Like gradually get to this color, or will they stay the color that they are their entire life cycle? Um, actually, I'm not sure. We we'll might have to ask him about that. The yellow one. Does that one get more green as it ages? Yeah. Yeah, I th I thought I'd heard that before. Yeah. So that they'll turn green as they age. Um, and yeah, here we got some more. Uh, Asian rat snakes. Uh, these are not Vietnamese blue beauties, but they kind of look similar because they're still Asian rat snakes. We've got a boa. Yeah, different uh, subspecies of Asian rat snake. Here we've got a whole bunch of ball pythons. These are some morphs. It's a grab bag of corn snakes. So that's cool. Yo, that's a pretty uh, ball python there. I love this one. Check out these guys. Like, what's going on here? 
This morph is uh, called piebald. Uh, so pied uh, there, there. Any uh, bald python where it's got pattern in some spots and then no pattern in other spots is piebald. Um, and is that in any way related to albinism or for example spot? these homies right here they got the red eyes they got the the white yeah that's an albino pied you can see so the albino is what makes the head patch yellow this is a black pastel pied so it doesn't have albinism the patch on the head is uh dark Hi. Is it okay if we get some shots of the booth? Yeah, Thank you. They yeah. have a green fluorescent protein um, in their genetics. So we are a rescue. Everything that you purchase here goes to rescue in helping other astronauts. Awesome. That's great. Um, do you guys have a business card? Yes. Sure. Uh, oh, over there? Right oh, right perfect. Yeah. We'll take a couple. Awesome. <laughs> and so. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, and you're uh, out of Rhode Island? Yes, and we have a um, network in what, New Bedford yeah. and Thompson Connect. Great. For every purchase, there's a lifelong support that you get from us. Awesome. Yeah. We are not going to have you bring home one and then just dump it. You, know, you, can, you, right. you can come back to us like 10 years later and say, hey, this fellow needs a girlfriend. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Are there already so many in captivity that that there's too many? That's why they are here. Because wow. People think that they're gonna be a millionaire breeding them, but the thing is, that how are you gonna take care of five, six hundred mouths for like what five months? Yeah, and that's the thing. If if it's a species that's easy to breed, even if there's high demand, mm -hmm. it's easy to breed. It's all so. about how you raise them. If you raise them properly with mm -hmm. live food. A lot of people think that it's okay to raise them with frozen food, but they don't get the nutritional levels that they would like. Oh, okay. I didn't know about that. So when I take them over, they're all on live food. You know, we teach them to eat palatines. So they have a variety of food. But live food is still, like, important right. for their diet, not just pellets. So, like, you know, when you go on a vacation, that you're worried at home. Nobody's feeding my salad for a week or two, you know. But I tell them, just get baby guppies or bone shrimp in the tank. Let them hunt. All right, cool. Because when they get to hunt, they get active. I might have to talk to my wife and convince her to let us get an axolotl. I swore off anything aquatic because I'm <laughs> sick of water changes. <laughs> But it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's true. When I when I get her sold on getting one of these, um, sure. what's the average lifespan for these little fellows? A proper can can go more than ten years. Oh wow. Yeah, I have, Very cool. I have people that have them for 15, 16 years and that's going strong. And about is this like are they adult? Do they get any bigger? They get bigger. They go from between nine to twelve in captivity. Oh wow. The and average, of course, like it's more likely that they'll be like eight yeah. to nine. Um, we do see them up to twelve inches. Yeah. That's awesome! Yeah. Wow. Have, how how old are these are in comparison like then? These are five months. Five oh months. wow, yes. they're babies! They have, oh. uh, September twenty fifth. Oh my yeah. goodness! So the nice thing about it, they're you know big enough that they're you know easy to care for in terms of they're not just on like baby brine shrimp that you have to set up a whole hatchery or whatever when they're. Oh really yeah, there. I worked in a fish lab yeah. in college. We had a brine shrimp tank. It oh, was. God. Uh, nuts, but you know they're small enough that you'll still get to watch them grow and yeah, that's see cool. how their kind of patterns and colors develop over time. Awesome, that's really cool. Well, I'm definitely going to so talk to my wife about these yeah. guys when I get home. A care sheet too. That's oh, a care sheet! Awesome. Everything that she would need to know before awesome. jumping on board. Awesome. You can go on our Facebook too. All the information is in there. Message us anytime. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. Y'all have a good day. Thanks. All right, let's go off to the side. I'm gonna talk about axolotls a little bit. Okay. All right, so the cool thing I wanted to mention about axolotls, but I didn't want to take up all their time at their booth. Um, when you asked if they were adults, I actually, I kind of wanted to make a joke there, but I didn't want to interrupt them too much to let them uh, talk to you. Um, they're not adults, but uh, in the sense that they're still growing, like she said, but even if they were full-size axolotls, in a sense, they're not adults because the thing about axolotls is that they are a type of salamander. They don't look like salamanders. Marcus, do they look like salamanders? I think they look like salamanders. They do look like <laughs> salamanders, but like they, 
Do salamanders usually have those frills, though? No, yeah. That's the thing that juvenile salamanders have. And in most species of salamanders, that is lost as they go to adulthood. Uh, but in axolotls, they just never actually mature to their adult form in most cases. Um, you can artificially cause them to mature. I believe it's by injecting iodine. Uh, but they don't live very long once they reach an adult salamander phase. They do have a salamander uh, form that you can force them into with an iodine injection, but they just they don't do it naturally and they don't live long once they do transition to it. So that's the cool thing about axolotls uh, and how they're never technically adults in that sense of the word adult. Is that, is that something that happens in the wild or is that exclusive to axolotls bred in captivity? I mean, if you go out into the wild with a syringe full of iodine... I um, mean, like, if they don't reach their, like, uh, oh, biological maturity, like... Oh, no, they're not supposed to. They reproduce as in their, like, pre-adult, uh, sub-adult, like, juvenile form. Oh, interesting. Um, and, yeah, like, they... I think there might be some aberrant individuals in the wild that reach, um, like, physical maturity, but that is not the norm, if it does happen at all. Anyway, let's look at some frogs. Yeah. Oh, yo, Tokay geckos, cool. Got some more day geckos. What are these, uh, like, these? black and orange spotted guys? Are these are Tokay geckos. They got their name because their call sounds like they're yelling Tokay, Tokay. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's what they sound like in the wild, or, I mean, even in your house. What? They're having a conversation. Is it okay if we film the animals here? Sure. All right, thanks. And uh, here's some uh, gopher snakes, uh, genus Pituophis, uh, same as the bull snakes. Uh, these are North American, uh, pretty closely related to the North American rat snakes, like the corn snake. Uh, just different genus. Uh, oh, look at your face! You got such a good face. These are hog noses. You see the, the nose on this thing? Yeah. So you know the uh, the gif I sent you on Discord where the person touches the snake and it flips over dead? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's this kind of snake. Oh, nice. Although these are plains hog noses, the snake in that gif is probably an eastern hog nose because those are m will more readily feign death. Uh, oh, than... before, before you go, right here. Yeah, you can't the trust rhyme. that rhyme. And? Uh, <laughs> if you don't know what kind of snake it is, don't touch it. Hey, there you go. If you know how to positively identify it and you know it's harmless, uh, then go ahead and pick it up. Uh, but if you see a tricolor snake in the wild and you can't positively identify it, uh, don't trust the colors uh, because there can be coral snakes um, where red touches black. Uh, that does happen, especially in South America. So um, in the in northern uh, in the North America, in our country, it's generally accurate but i wouldn't want to bet my life on it that's for sure oh yeah <laughs> got some scaleless rat snakes over here scaleless rat snakes yeah check him out he doesn't have scales well he does have a few on his uh spine yo giant african millipedes <laughs> these are the ones you wanted to breed the millipedes to get right yeah these are the ones i was working on millipedes for my uh Florida ivory millipede colony died on me, so I gotta figure out my millipede husbandry and fix whatever I did wrong. I, cause I mean, you see, these are over a hundred dollars each. So um, ivory millipedes way less expensive, um, and I gotta be able to keep millipedes alive before I go buying a big boy. Yeah, the big boys. Oh, we got some basilisks here. That's cool. Oh, so there's a real-life animal that's named a basilisk? Yeah. I think those are the ones that can run across the water. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yes, King! Speaking of which... Yeah, hello, Northern Blue Tongue. You're so cute. Are you taking a nap in there? He is. Oh, and there's some Euromastics. Those are cool. What did you call me? <laughs> nah, these fellas. These are Euromastics. So what is a Euromastic and how does it differ from, say, like this big boy right here? As a layman, like I look at these and I see this, I see that, I'm like, oh, that's a dragon of some kind. I haven't particularly studied Euromastics that much, but I can tell, uh, you can tell what it, that it's a Euromastics because of the way that it is. Oh, fair. 
Did you get a good shot of the scaleless rat snake? I tried. There were a bunch of people here. <laughs> so what, if any, difference is there between scaled and scaleless snakes? Um, it depends on the species. Uh, the main difference is that they don't have scales, but spe depending on species, like rat snakes, they do pretty good without scales. Uh, ball pythons can struggle sometimes, so it's just they lack the extra protection of the scales. Um, and with some species, that's an issue, others it's not. And with these, I've heard pretty good things. They do really well. Uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm not looking to buy today, but would it be okay if I hold one of the millipedes? I haven't held one of these things in years, but I've, I'm looking to get one of these someday. I had a colony of Florida ivories, but I did something wrong. They didn't make it, so I got to get better at millipedes before I can get one of these. These are just absolutely incredible. So this is the giant African millipede, largest species in the world, and um, this is not anywhere near as big as they can get. Um, but they are adorable. Let's, we'll see if it wants to uncurl. It's a male. He's got a big head. Oh, and then if you take a look, there's you can see the little white dots moving. Um, let's see. Oh, he's uncurling. So I'm, not, I'm trying to find the mites that these guys have on them. Um, I saw a cup. Oh yeah, they're they're like kind of underneath on the legs. But these guys have a uh, symbiotic mite that lives on them and it keeps their, uh, their bodies clean because they can't really clean off their backs. Uh, so there's these little tiny white mites that just live on them and clean out the cracks between their uh, plates. Yep, there's one right there. That's a big old roly-poly. Yeah, boy. Oh, and then there at the back, you can see a little trap door that it poops out of. Yeah, that's a cool. little legs moving around. On yeah. Oh, there's one of the mites. There's a mite on the on its back. There we go. I don't know if we got that on video, but that's fine if not. Yeah. Oh, there's a couple near ahead. Yeah, grab grab a shot of those. Yeah, those little white dots. They uh, they're the little friends that help keep this thing clean. Thank you so much. Thank you. There you go. Yo, more axolotls. Is it okay if we film the axolotls? Thank you. <laughs> oh, he did a little gill. What babies? Sam. What black? Rumble forest. <laughs> Yeah. These guys are really chill. How old are they? Which ones? Uh, either of these guys, yeah. She's about a year and a half, and she's about three. Oh, I love the God, spikes. Beautiful. They're really well socialized. Yeah, we handle them all the time. You want the big one? You can pet them. They like rubs under the chin. Yeah, don't mind it. Stick your hand out. Hey, little buddy. Oh, little pretty girl. Very elegant. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do you mind if we film some of your stuff here? All right. Thanks. Thank you. Oh wow. Ooh, is that sundew? That's awesome. I don't know if I trust myself to keep a carnivorous plant alive, but if I ever try it again. Just set up that uh, is that like kind of a a system that you use to keep them good? Yes, yeah, so this is a self-watering pot. So nice. normally, when it's at this height with a normal plant, it'd be super watered. But you want to keep it at least this high all the time for this guy. And the water is about there because it's a bog plant. So this one really oh. likes to be wet yeah. at all times. Do you ever have to worry about like mold or anything else with them? With um, that kind of moisture? Depends on your soil, but your soil should be pretty sterile anyway. Because <laughs> there's no nutrients in it. Oh! The biggest killer of like sundews and uh, like Venus flytraps and stuff are nutrients. 
So you, you only want to use distilled water. So you wouldn't really get fungus gnats then if it's sterile yeah, soil, you, would you? you shouldn't really have any problem with fungus gnats. And if you do, the sun will eat them. Oh, right, yeah. That, exactly. I didn't even think about that. Um, so here's a great example of a normal ball python. That's what they're. That's what you would get if you went out into Ghana, Benin, or Togo, and found a ball python just out crawling around in the ground. It would look like that. But you know, this, we got coral glow here. Uh, we got pides. We got all sorts of the super stripe. Um, and yeah, that's just all the cool different things you can do with ball pythons in captive breeding. You know, what? make that video even more bitching if you bought one. It would. Uh, my wife would kill me. What? Oh my god, are these gotcha machines? Uh, those appear to be. Oh those. my god, we got gotcha? <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you mind if we film? Yeah, okay. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. And this is. Uh, here. Oh my god. We're here What's with the company? Coastline Pets and Pods. And yeah, these are Kaga. little roly poly bugs. I've got. Um, I don't know if they have zebras here, but that's the species. Oh, it just says gotcha ball. <laughs> you got rubber duckies! I do. Yeah, I can oh. trade some. That's adorable. I love those. If they want to cooperate. Yeah, I got zebras at home with my corn snake. I'm trying to get them to reproduce in a bin. And if I, uh, if I get really into them, rubber duckies are kind of on the list of the ones I might want to get someday. Yeah, no, definitely. They're great. They're so cute. I love how, I mean, Marcus, have you, have you ever seen these, th these guys? Not in person, no. Get one not balled up. <laughs> of I love the Van Venmo hand stamp. <laughs> So that's, oh that's a rubber ducky isopod. Their faces look like rubber duckies, and they are so cute. I'm gonna get a little bit of a zoom action going. And that behavior it's doing there is called conglobating. That's the term for when they go into a little ball. It's a very fun word. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thanks a bunch, love them. Oh, I love this bumblebee! He's a total sweetheart. I think this is a coyote here. How can you tell? Uh, because of the way that it is. Is this a coyote skull? It is a coyote skull. I have a coyote skull at home, and I can tell because of the way that it is. <laughs> it just, it, it has a very coyote skull-like look to it. Is it okay if we get some shots of the booth? Yeah, Thank you so much. Uh, what species is this? Is that a this one's a yep, chihuahua. Oh my oh, god, that cool. is the gecko that I'm thinking of getting someday. Not today, but someday. They're rad. Yeah, are they, how do they compare to lychees in your experience? I call them like the younger cousin. Lychees can be a little territorial. These guys are like less that. I think I've been bit once by my chewies. Oh, awesome. Was this a toke? Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I was telling you about before they got their name because of the call they have. It's yellow Oh my toke. god, that's a great color. Yeah, they're real pretty. But yeah, those, I'm big on the tokes. They don't like interacting with people though, right? So birds, I personally hand tamed them. Oh, okay. So you, with bird, you can just... And he doesn't try to bite or anything. That's really cool. But usually, uh, they got a bit of an attitude. I got Budweiser. Is it cool if we film some of these? Absolutely, go for it. Awesome, great. And I'm gonna get so yeah, here we're at Jason's Exotic Reptiles booth. We got some boas. Do you have one of these already? Oh yeah, I got one of those first thing here. These are some real gorgeous morphs. But yeah, you see, if you look at the boa faces, they've got like that angular face. I feel like pythons tend to have more like curvy faces and boas have a more angular face. Boas kind of got like that mean dog look. And pythons have like that kind of curled lip puppy dog look. They got that dog in them? Yeah, they, they got that dog. Yeah, here we go. Here's some pythons. 
Yeah, come get these. So you can see they just got like a different face. That's really, I think, the main way I tell them apart. They've got like the, the prominent, for lack of a better term, holes in their face, yeah? Well, what some, are, what some boas calls? have bigger holes in their faces too, though. Like the uh, green, tr uh, uh, emerald tree boas, they've got, got huge heat pits. Mm -hmm. So you can't just trust the heat pits. So what is the function of a heat pit in a snake? Uh, it gives them thermal vision, kind of. It lets them see heat and know where their food is. That's why it's like right on the upper lip, right, right on the mouth. They lock onto their prey and then the heat pits tell them, like number one, if it's the right temperature, and number two, where it is. Awesome, thanks a bunch. Thank you so much. Yo, five dollars for anything here? I mean, five bucks for Eco Earth, eh? I'm not looking for Eco Earth, but ceramic bulbs. Do you guys take card? We do, yeah. I might need these. I don't know if I want all three. Okay. Marcus, do you think I have to call my wife about this first? <laughs> okay. It could only be five dollars every budget anyway. Your budget was a hundred. You spent ninety. Yeah. Um. Let me grab my card. You know, I'll grab the two little ones because those might fit perfectly on the uh, old fiberglass cages I got. Yeah, I got these two that look just like Neo Deche, but they're made of fiberglass. Okay. And yeah, this is just the size that, that I need. Perfect. Also, right, so two of those? Yep, two of these. Um, and have you guys tested these? You know, if these work? They do. They do. All right. Yeah. Oh, awesome. I trust you. If they don't work, I'll just make my own video and get 50 views saying that you sold me a broken light. <laughs> the broken light from Jason Exotic Reptiles. Yeah. All right, thanks a bunch. Oh, well, hang on. Well, let's make a video. I just got something from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. I need to get this on my YouTube channel. All right, bring up the camera. I got to get the table in the background. Awesome, thanks. Thank you. Yo, what's up, everyone? I'm here with Jason at Jason's Exotic Reptiles. I got these. Got some lights. Got some light fixtures. Let's go. All right, yeah, that's it. That's all I needed. <laughs> all right, so that's about where we ended things off for the day. Uh, after we finished hanging out and saying hi at the Jason's Exotic Reptiles booth, we uh, had pretty much seen everything there uh, that, that there was and had done everything we wanted to do. So we packed up and headed out. Overall, I'd say I had a really awesome time. It was well worth waking up early and making the long drive out to the expo and back. Uh, I'll definitely be going to more expos in the future, so be sure to subscribe for more cool reptile expo and snake education content from Sea Grape Serpentarium. And don't forget to leave a like and comment about what parts of the expo you found most interesting, or let me know if there's uh, another snake topic you'd like to see me cover in a future video. Finally, I just want to give a big thanks to Show Me Reptiles for organizing this event as well as one final thanks to all the vendors who allowed us to film at their booths and took time to answer questions for us. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Until next time, I'm Cody, this is Slick Mister, and you've been watching Seagrave Serpentarium. Bye. All right, you can't be on the microphone, buddy.